Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Beckwith, and I just wanted to do this quick video to talk uh, briefly about a new UN report that came out looking at global risks. So back at the beginning of the year, the World Economic Forum put out a hundred and hundred odd page um, report on risks facing humanity, and they tried to identify all of the risks and rank them in order of severity, you know, worst to not so bad, um, where risk, of course, is the probability of something happening multiplied by the impact, the consequences, if it does happen. Okay, so you can have things that are very difficult to quantify if the risk uh, is, of occurrence is very, very low probability of occurrence is very low, but the consequences are very high because you're multiplying a very small number by a very large number, and that gives you large error. So the UN has come out with their version of a risk global risk report, some interesting things in it. So that's what I'm going to discuss uh, in this video. And this is the first time that they've put this together. So um, this is a summary of it right here. I'll talk about the report in more detail, but they divide it into, they look at global vulnerabilities, so technological risks like cybersecurity breakdown, negative outcomes of AI and so-called frontier technologies, technology-driven power concentration, and then there's societal risks like a new pandemic, uh, bio risks, bioterror, mass movement of people and how that would affect society. And then there's the environmental risks, rapid decline in biodiversity, shortages of natural resources, like I guess critical minerals, things like that. Large scale natural hazard risks, extreme weather events and things, large scale pollution. And then there's political risks, the big, the highest being misinformation, disinformation. So lots of nice graphics and illustrations showing you kind of like, uh, you know, the playing field, if you like, the sandbox and the different peaks are the risks that stand above the background. Okay, so this is the report, um, United Nations Global Risk Report 2024. It just came out. Okay, so um, don't know why they don't call it 2025, but anyway. Um, okay, so this is the article, United Nations Futures Lab. This group um, is the group in the UN that put out the UN Global Risk Report. So it's the United Nations, various universities in different countries, etc. Lloyd's, you know, famous insurer. So we're living in an age of increasing compl complex and interconnected global risks. Multilateral institutions are not sufficiently prepared. So this risk report identifies which risks are most important and which risks were least prepared for. The message from the United Nations Secretary General is stark. Our future depends on global cooperation to address global risks. No country company or institution can confront these global vulnerabilities alone, from climate disruption to pandemics and rapidly evolving frontier technologies, AI technologies, etc. These risks are complex, interconnected and growing. They require close cooperation and communication between countries to shape a better future for all. Okay, so this risk report was developed by the Executive Office of the UN Secretary General um, and in, in collaboration with lots of other people. So it's a, based on a global survey, 1,100 stakeholders, 134 countries. Global vulnerabilities arise when institutions are unprepared or underprepared for important risks. They cluster across political, technological, societal, and environmental domains. Many risks are already turning into crises. 
Over 80% of respondents identified misinformation, disinformation as a top global vulnerability. Environmental risks are a priority across all regions. Five of the top 10 most important risks are environmental. Multi-government action is seen as the most effective response. And then they give different scenarios, um, different scenarios on global vulnerabilities and leading to breakdown or breakthroughs. Okay, so these scenarios are not predictions, but they're connecting perceptions, actions, outcomes. No scenario assumes a perfect outcome. Okay, so they develop these scenarios, um, different types of scenarios and look at the, you know, you know, to give you some sort of idea as to, you know, what risks are, are we should worry about the most, what risk we can actually do something about um, and so on. Okay, and there's interconnections between the risks. Okay, so the report is on that website. Um, this is a little article that came out talking about the global risk report in general, the added value of the UN global risk report here, um, talks about some of the other risk reports that are out there, you know, timelines for the development of the risk report, etc. And this is a copy of the report. Now, before I get into the details of this report, let me just point out that I've already covered this. This is the World Economic Forum Global Risks Report, which came out. It was published January 15th, 2025. You can download it from here, the full report, or just the infographics or what have you. And this is just the infographic section in that risk report. So they looked at short term to midterm to long term, long term being 10 years and the, diff the top 10 risks that are selected. Again, it was based on a survey, but this time by the World Economic Forum. So extreme weather events was, was, was second. Um, State-based armed conflict was first. Geoeconomic confrontation, trade wars, etc., was third. Misinformation, disinformation was very high, but not first. Polarization of society, economic downturn, Critical change to Earth systems, you know, I would think, you know, these things are way underrepresented being this far down. But anyway, they looked at the, they, they rank things by severity, short term, misinformation, disinformation, extreme weather events, pollution, longer term, 10 years. Look at the environmental ones, extreme weather, biodiversity loss, critical change, tipping points in the Earth systems natural resource shortages, pollution here. And uh, they looked at severity and they created a map of how all the risks can be connected together um, and risk severity in, you know, two to 10 years and th all the different things. So, so it's actually quite interesting. You can just look at the infographics to get kind of a good idea for for what they're talking about. Uh, okay, and uh, so they they generate this each year. It comes out at the beginning of the year. This is the actual report, 104 pages, okay, with, uh, you know, all the details. And you can download previous reports and see how things have changed over time. Okay, but right now our focus is on the UN Global Risk Report. So let's have a look. So I've shown you this already in the introduction the different technological risks, societal risks, environmental risks, and then political risk, mis- and disinformation. And then they do the, um, they the, here, here is an overview, a table showing this is the perceptions of the most important global risks. So ranking climate change in action, and they have a weighting scale, large scale pollution, mis- and disinformation, natural hazards, rising inequalities, biodiversity, geopolitical tensions, natural resource, resource shortages. So all of these environmental ones are pushing their way up to the top rapidly. Um, and uh, okay, so, and then they looked at the answers to the questionnaire by the location of the respondent. So what did people in 
Asia think the worst risks were, and they're all the top five are environmental. Um, and then, uh, you know, here, you know, in, in the different, so Europe and North America, climate change in action, mis and disinformation is pushing its way right to the top, large scale pollution, inequality, and so on. Okay, so you can see how people around the globe in the different continents are ranking these risks. Many of the risks are already turning into crises. So the top five risks that are perceived to be currently occurring, mis and disinformation, rise in inequality, geopolitical tensions, climate change in action, large scale pollution, and then next one to seven years, eight to 15 years, and interestingly, um, you know, they have here geoengineering disasters is 25% ranked, you know, in the next eight to 15 years. And then 16 years in 2050, it's geoengineering disasters, space-based events. This is like solar flares and, uh, you know, asteroid impacts and things like that, space-based events. So this is by time frame right now, mis and disinformation is happening big time. AI is coming along frontier technologies to contribute to more mis and disinformation, new pandemic sort of time frame, um, and space-based events like uh, asteroid impact or solar flare or something. Then they connect all of the different risks um, so there's a lot of, nothing lives in isolation. There's a, there, there's a, lots of these things occurring like bio risk leading to a new pandemic, geopolitical tensions, multilateral institution collapse, large scale war, weapons of mass destruction, mass movement of people, climate change in action, leading to all of these other environmental hazards and so on. Okay, so it's all in there. Um, the top 10 risks by connection strength, okay, how interconnected they are, geopolitical tensions, which is the largest circle here, is ranked the highest. So the top connected risks, large-scale war leading to weapons of mass destruction like nuclear, cascade risks, mass movement of people, rule of law collapse, coming from the original risk leading to subsequent risks. And then climate change in action is really high on uh, top connected risks are to natural hazards and to biodiversity decline, mass movement of people, natural resource shortages. Okay, so you can see all of the different types of risks being weighed. Um, this is the preparedness um, according to the overall preparedness and then the preparedness to certain types of risks. So you can see, you know, this the level of preparedness low is the reds and green is the highs. So you can see how well people are ranking global preparedness to these sort of risks. And there's lots of figures like this. This is um, most prepared, least prepared, and um, least important, most important risks. So most important risk, climate change in action. Um, and these are all the environmental clusters right here, very high on the scale. Um, you've got the bio risks, you've got technology risks, and then you've got the mis and disinformation. We're very ill-prepared for it, and it's a very high risk. It's not judged as the most important, but you know it stands out on its own like a sore thumb. Um, the most effective actions to reduce risk, multi-government action, you need functioning society around the globe in order to get different organizations like the UN, et cetera, to take multi-government action. And we're seeing these things weakened right now in a significant way. Joint action, governments and civil society, joint action, governments and private sector. Okay, so governments involved in any of these possible responses that can lead to decent outcomes. The barriers are weak governance, uh, lack of political consensus, lack of trust and accountability. You know, those things, and also incorrect prior prioritization of risks, in inadequate data and information, strong resistance, public, political or corporate, and so on. So there, you can see 
the barriers and this shows the top three barriers to action for climate change in action. The, the highest is lack of political consensus and then there's weak governance, coordination, incorrect risk prioritization. People just don't get the risks. You know, you think they'd get them now, but they don't. Um, and then, you know, how do you get cooperation to shape, uh, to, to deal with these risks? And there's different scenarios. So, you know, here's uh, global fragmentation, collapsing, global vulnerability, not natural hazard risk. Okay, so it gives a series of scenarios. This is a breakdown scenario. There's a status quo scenario, um, progress scenario, making progress, say, on pandemic, and a breakthrough scenario where you get, this is the utopian thing, strong and accelerating global vulnerabilities are addressed. And they deal with the example of cybersecurity breakdown. Okay, and then the path forward, what is the path forward? You know, how do we maneuver through this sort of landscape of risk? Um, and there's a framework for identifying these different risks. And um, there's uh, a detailed list of the risks. So if we go to environmental, inaction on climate change, failure or reluctance of individuals, governments, or organizations to implement substantial, substantial measures or policies aired at mitigating and adapting to the adverse impacts of climate change, such as rising temperatures, extreme weather events, and environmental degradation, large-scale natural hazard risks, uh, changing weather, changing meteorology, um, large-scale pollution, air, water, land pollution, it includes radiation pollution, air pollution, of course, rapid decline in biodiversity, the variety and abundance of species dropping, so the biosphere being less resilient, shortages of natural resources. This is like high value natural resources, like, you know, they talk about oil, gas, minerals, timber, mismanagement, competition, space-based events. Interesting, they're, they're talking about solar flares, geomagnetic storms, or asteroid impacts. Um, they don't mention the Kessler syndrome here, which I think is a more pressing space-based event which could take out the global internet. So make so have a look at the uh, Kessler syndrome, um, the Wikipedia page on it to find out more about it. Then of course, there's the political risks, the societal risks, technology um, and uh, misinformation and uh, all of these other things. So they break it down into lots of details and uh, they, they uh, you know, put the scenarios in there and so on. So anyway, it's, uh, it's an interesting report. You know, it's food for thought and lots of discussion. And it complements, it really complements the World Economic Forum Global Risk Report for 2025. So if you're interested in high level uh, risks that are, some of which are facing us and hitting us hard today as I speak, then you want to look at this report by the World Economic Forum. Watch my video that I filmed back shortly after this report came out. And uh, also look at this new report by the United Nations. So thank you for listening. Please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating at PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks again and bye for now.